you have always done virtual. Your mm -hmm. agents are doing virtual. Mm -hmm. um, what, what, what talk through like, I mean, I know you can't compare it specifically because you didn't do it. However, you can contrast the two. Mm -hmm. Talk about um, why you think that's just a more efficient, effective way to do business in 2022 and beyond. Sure. I mean, well, COVID number one, I think COVID kind of changed the landscape for a bunch of insurance agencies, yes. how they do things. Um, the other thing too, is that with COVID kind of Zoom kind of came out and became very popular. And a lot of clients are very comfortable with doing Zooms now. And you can share your screen, you can show the policy, you can show everything. So I kind of feel like maybe going to people's homes is a little antiquated. It's hmm. not necessarily, uh, uh, it's not necessary really anymore with technology. Like and yeah, so like the process is old or the people that do it are old? Uh, neither. Not the people. No, the process is, is old. But you know what? If it works for you and that's what you feel comfortable with, then keep doing it. There's that's a good out. answer. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. What virtual sales tips would you give? That's where I was kind of leading us to. I just had to have some fun along the way. Welcome back to the Power Player Podcast, ladies and gentlemen, special guest. Welcome back. The one, the only, like I could brag so much on this lady. We get along so well. She's an absolute rock star and a machine. She's exploded a brand and a business and a book and like literally <laughs> luggage and business wear. Like she's all over the place. Please welcome back, Jesse Park. Thank you, Cody. I am so excited. It's crazy. We've uh, we've done a lot together over the last year. Yeah, a lot. It's been a year. Yeah, it's been nuts. That's what's crazy. For those that don't know, like Jesse came to eight percent. She was sitting in literally the VIP in the back. She was sweating. She didn't deserve it because of you know she's got some money, but she didn't prove it. She sat in the back and <laughs> she's and then. But what's cool is I didn't know that you called Milo mm -hmm. and said, "Hey, buddy, you, dude, you got to get here." And yeah, then you, then yeah. Came. We had just started dating and uh, we, I think we'd been dating for like uh, six weeks at that time, you know, and I was like, I'm going to a conference and, you know, it's an insurance conference. I'm sure it's going to be boring. I'll be back in a couple of days. And then like <laughs> the very first uh, day after I think it was like Eric Thomas, I texted him. I was like, you have to get here. Mm. This is freaking amazing. And he wow. He packed, he hopped on a plane and was there within by that night. So he got to spend the rest of the conference with me. That's amazing. Well, I can tell you this. If he liked last year, I can't even imagine what he thinks about this year. Uh, oh. It's like everything's double. It just yeah. is, right? All of it's double. Um, you did like 50 million last year in health around that. Does I, am I getting better at this? Am I getting closer? So it's a combination of health, life, and Medicare. Okay. So, and it was closer to 57. Oh, it's okay. okay. I'm, I'm used to it. One I'm time getting you, there. Yeah, one time you said 40. So. And then you were offended. A little. <laughs> then we're talking about tens of millions of dollars, not just a few million, yeah. you know, yeah. not just a measly few mil, right? Yeah. 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 What, what are you projecting to do this year? You know, I don't know. Um, I'm actually. You had to guess. I, I, I don't know because our recruitment efforts have really been going really well. And, uh, we are, we're adding a couple things to our portfolio. So, um, yeah. I mean, if I were to guess, I'd say 60, maybe, I don't know. I mean, it's just, okay. it's kind of hard to tell. I really don't even know until the end because some yeah. people may, may do this one better, or, you know, maybe I'll onboard a huge number of agents this month yeah. or something. Who knows? I don't know. Yes. All right. F fun question. Okay. Fun question for, for our, for our, for our listening audience, for their, sure. for their listening pleasure. How many exotic cars have you owned? <laughs> Two. I don't even, they're not even exotic. They're just nice cars. Which are? Uh, so I sold the Lambo. <laughs> it's not exotic. Oh, I, so I sold that one. Um, so I have a, G, a G63 Boom. and a E450. You're a beast. I love it. It's and not as good as your car though. No, no, yours is electric. Yeah, it's just a Porsche Taycan. You know, it's no big deal. Anybody no. can buy that. <laughs> no big deal. And I save money on gas. I'm cheap, I guess. I don't know. You know. Yeah, I'm thinking but, of going. I'm thinking of going electric. 
what would you pick? Uh, you know, I don't really know. I haven't really been even shopping, but I just, you know, I just think that the wave of the future is electric. I really liked riding yes. a car. So maybe a Porsche Taycan. You liked it. Okay, cool. Yeah. I, I saw a vehicle this morning that's like a Mercedes EG X X is coming out in late 2023. It's like 150K. It looks nasty. Oh, yeah. Gosh, I'll looks, probably get that. That's what we'll do. We'll both get that when it comes out. Okay. We well, go. cheers to that. Uh, I want to talk about just your overall culture for a quick second before we get to some specifics of other things you've done and what you're doing. You yeah. have a fun culture. Today's Thirsty Thursdays. We're actually recording this a few days before it launches. So, yes, it's Thursday yeah. when we're recording this. It's Tuesday yeah. when you guys are listening if you listen to it early. Um, but it's 514 where you're at. So, Thirsty Thursday probably just ended. I it uh, it starts at three, so I heard the bar cart out there. I was on another. I did a. I just did a podcast with um, Entrepreneur. dot com, so I wasn't able to partake in. No, no big deal. Just no just. Big deal. It, now this has got to be cooler than Entrepreneur. dot com though. Come it on. is. Am it I is. a better host than whoever hosted that? It was Lee Feldman, um, but I don't know. Yeah, who that is. you're better. Okay, good. Uh, come on, Lee. I'm gonna tag him and let him know. <laughs> um, but yeah, it is Thirsty Thursday. Um, one of the things whenever I, so I started in insurance five and a half years ago yep. with just by myself, right? So just by myself and uh, <laughs> I, I really just, I worked, it was hard work. I worked leads. I dialed all the time. I um, didn't really have anything to look forward to, you know, except for just helping clients and making money. And so mm. whenever I started hiring agents and I started onboarding, I wanted to create something where people looked forward to more than just their paycheck. I wanted to create a workspace where people wanted to come to, uh, felt comfortable coming to, and actually like really looked forward to driving into work and sitting and dialing all day because I know firsthand that dialing and prospecting is very difficult. So I wanted to make it fun. So we do things like Thirsty Thursday. Um, we pass around a bar cart. People can choose two drinks. We have all the top shelf te tequila, vodka, rum, whatever, mixers and everything. Um, we also cheers when people make their first sale. Uh, shop. Um, and you would think I'm an alcoholic. I'm really not. I don't even really like. I don't know. Alcohol. What What do you guys think? <laughs> Post in comments below. Do you think Jesse's an alcoholic or just really no. cool? No, I don't even drink that much. But um, we do popcorn Wednesdays. Whoa, uh, is that new? No, I've had it. Do you have like a big popcorn thing in your? Yeah, I bought a big Shut popcorn. Up. Yeah, we make caramel corn and we make butter corn. Dude, oh, we've got to adopt that, Dylan. We need some freaking popcorn in our life. I I, I feel like Hitler over here, the, the, compared to your the way you run your office. You're so like, mean, bro. Yeah, um, Dylan's like, where's my drinks? Where's my popcorn? Where's right? my where's my? Okay, you got popcorn Wednesday, thirsty Thursday, Thursday. Um, Alcoholics do, Alcoholics Anonymous. When is the AA meeting? Yeah. We do trainings on Tuesdays, um, and we make trainings the choice of the agents. You know, whatever they want to hear that week, That's and amazing. we do team outings. Like I've done team outings at Andretti. Um, do you know what mm. that is? It's a yeah, race. Park. Uh, well, I know the name. It's, it sounds like a race park or something. Yeah, race park. I've done. Um, I've I've rented out the whole top floor of a restaurant called Del Frisco's. It's a steakhouse. Ooh, I love Del Frisco's. They have them in Dallas. It's my favorite. Oh my gosh. So I really try to, I, I want them to obviously work hard and do well, but I want to reward them for that. I don't want to just kind of yeah. sit back on my laurels and I don't know, not, not yeah. show them I appreciate them. Yes. You know what I'm doing right now? I want a big old popcorn machine. For the office. Okay. I got it on Amazon. It's actually very reasonable. I think it was like 129. No way. Yeah, it's not much at all. It's not okay. like I'm gonna put make sure it's more expensive and bigger than the one Jesse Park just bought. Oh. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've had I've had it for two years. We've had popcorn Wednesday now for two years. Well that's amazing. I bought the building almost two years ago. I like that better. Is that weird? I like that better than the 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 Thirsty Thursday. I do too. That caramel corn is so good. I, uh, I, cause I don't even really partake in the thirsty Thursday, especially, yeah. popcorn, but the popcorn Wednesday every day. I think a big TV network is going to pick us up and we're going to host our own show one day, you know, just yeah. together, just me and you, like who's, who's more fun than me and you on camera. I don't I'll know. wait. Maybe you know? me and Feldman. Yeah. I don't know. We'll find out. Okay. <laughs> okay. Maybe me, maybe me and Lee Feldman. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. 
Uh, why is all that stuff so important for those that are out there? They're listening. They feel disconnected, maybe from the agency they're working with. They feel alone. They feel, you know, COVID and virtual and all this other stuff. Maybe they don't have an office in their area. Maybe they do, but they hate going to it. Maybe it's like a corporate office and the walls are like puke brown. And you know, there's like you know, they like mm-hmm. lock lock them in. They chain them into their headset. You know what I mean? Like it's just there's yeah. a lot of those type of environments out there. You know what I'm talking about? I've been there. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. How, well, why is your operation and culture? so important and how do others maybe find more of that if they don't have it uh i mean i think it's important for morale uh i didn't sure. mention the zen den so we have a zen den where people can get massages and there's a massage chair and a nap chair so if they get tired they can take a nap there's yoga when did uh, this we- happen zen den? I've, I've always had this and you i gotta start a- talking about this stuff i have a game showing room. it off it has a pinball machine. It you have a casino? A... No, I don't have a casino. Yeah. Um, I just, I don't know. I just think it's important. I just wanted to have fun. Everybody's I... going to want to work for Jesse Park now. You get, you know, or with Jesse at least, right? You get to drive Lambos and hang out and out, eat popcorn and drink. Not while you're driving the Lambo, but drink tequila and vodka and, and rum. And then you get to uh, hang out in the Zen Den and get a massage. Do they, do, do, when do you work? Uh, they actually work most of the time. I think it's just nice that they have, you know, occasionally I'll walk by and someone will be in the massage chair and they'll have the little eye patch on, you know, taking a nap and everything. Um, but I, I don't breathe down people's necks. I, I think yeah. that if you're going to be an insurance broker, you need to be able to maintain your schedule yourself. And if they feel like they deserve a massage, I'm not going to say anything. It's that's why it's here. It's so yeah. they can come to the office and be comfortable and have fun. They're also 1099. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, yeah, you're not their boss, right? I mean, you you know, you're working with them. They're, you're their partner and you're and you're having some freaking fun along the way. You got to share more of that. That's freaking epic. Like we've hung out for a year. And you didn't know that. And I didn't know about the popcorn or the Zen Den. You, you must know? not pay attention to me on social media, Cody. Maybe I- that's it. Yeah. Maybe that's it. Maybe the re- all of you guys watching and me, we're going to start following Jesse. Okay, say I all at once. One, two, three, I. Okay, perfect. Now we're all following Jesse. We're going to check out her stuff more. I'm going to go check out her story right now just so that it um, starts showing that's up. I, I tagged you. I t- have tagged you more than you've tagged me. That's for sure. That's true. That's true. Okay. Yeah, that's true. You're um, right. Thank you so much. It's Jesse Christina. So it's like J E S S I C R I S T I N A A H. Do you, you want to know Jesse Park? You yeah, what to- is that? So my my name is Jesse Christina Park, right? And everything was taken. Jesse Christina, Jesse Park, Jesse Dot Park, Jesse Dart, uh, Jesse Inspires, Jesse Inter. Everything was taken. So finally, I got so frustrated and I typed out Jesse Christina and then I just went, ah. Uh, <laughs> A-H, just Christina, <laughs> and that one wasn't taken. And I was like, okay, that's it. That's that's my username now. So That's awesome. It doesn't even matter because it's like you're so easy to find on here. A-H does not stand for anything except for ah. Uh. Ah. Uh, <laughs> um, well, I was watching a little real um, interview, all 57 agents today. That's hilarious. Oh, he just did that one. Isaiah did that one. Isaiah is awesome. He's a cool dude. You see yeah. all the, the reels we've been doing? You see how funny they are? They are. You you are cranking them out. Yeah. 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 You are. You are. Yeah, you really are. Well, wh- what would you say to an agent out there that isn't quite to your level yet, but mm-hmm. what steps did you take along the way to get to where you are today? Because you started only like five or six years ago. Five and a half years ago. Yeah. Yeah. See, I'm um, always off with the math and she always corrects me. Five and a half years ago. Five and a half years ago, um, it's almost six years to the T that I got my license, but I don't. I kind of struggled in the beginning. Um, so, why, why I, did you struggle? Why did you struggle? I didn't know you struggled. Because I didn't know what I was doing, um, and I. You started, know now. Yeah, I started off with a captive agency, and so yeah. I also struggled with the with the idea of selling something to someone that may not be good for them, and so uh, that that hindered me a lot until I finally realized that that was a problem. So I moved, I found a different. Mm. Um, but I would just say, you know what, if you really want to make a difference in your life and the life of your family, then the insurance industry is really how you can do it. Um, it's not an overnight thing and it's not going to be something that you achieve. And within one year you're rich. 
uh, it takes time to build up that book of business and to build a clientele and to build up residual income. And then once you get to the part where you have a residual income and you want to start recruiting, it takes time to find the right recruits. It takes time to, to train the right people. So it's not anything that will ever be overnight or instant, but if yeah. you just keep that in mind that that's what you want to have and you keep working at it every single day, even just a little bit, every single day you'll hit it. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think you're the best at helping agents at specifically? If you had to pinpoint. Yeah. Um, you know, I kind of, I focus on a lot of things like in my course, all the things that I talk about in my book and my course go over what I talk to agents about all the time. So I, I think the, the, paramounts of being successful as an agent aren't just one thing so i try to teach them like uh we go over mindset exercises like we could we do fear setting i have a lot of agents that when they first come on they're so afraid of rejection like what if someone yells at me what if someone says no you know so we go over wor worst case scenario what's the worst that can happen right yes um, the scripting and how you talk to people is huge. And I know I've done a lot of that on the 8% tour, um, you know, making sure that you set the expectations for your clients, letting your clients know that they can say no to you, that there is an option where if you don't like some, if they don't like something, they can tell you to go back to the drawing board. But as long as you maintain them as a client, right? Yeah. Um, how you talk to people, how you build rapport, how you build the, the plans, right? So I think product knowledge is very important. I do product trainings all the time. Uh, you don't have to know all 200 before you start, but it is nice that you have a general concept of how the plans work, at least maybe four to five different carriers. Um, at least start off knowing two off, right off the top, right? So yeah. product knowledge is important. Uh, just general marketing. I teach them how to do social media, how to market themselves. That's what I did in my prior career as I was a social media director of marketing for a company. So mm. um, that's really important to know how to market yourself. And so I think it's just multifaceted and being able to be multifaceted is what makes agents successful. Yes. Have you, did you ever sell face-to-face? -face? No. <laughs> Never. Never. That's crazy. You know what's funny is most people say, Every agent should start face to face to at least learn how to sell. Mm. But you clearly don't agree. No, I, that's weird. <laughs> face to face is weird. Uh, uh, I'm sure I would do great at it, but I just never. Oh. That was the model. So the the model that I was introduced to and always had in front of me was just leads. So I never had to. Um, yeah. And and I found that talking over the I I. I never did door to door. I did. Uh, I did joined a BNI, like a business networking group. I joined that, yep. uh, but that's different. That's networking. That's not going into someone's home and that you've never met before or anything Correct. like that. So, um, definitely. I mean, I did everything I built was over the phone sales, and that's how I teach my agents is over the phone, and that's why we recruit all over the United States because you can work from home. Yes, yes, and and you have always done virtual. Your <laughs> agents are doing virtual. Mm -hmm. Um, what, 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 talk through, like, I mean, I know you can't compare it specifically because you didn't do it. However, you can contrast the two mm -hmm. talk about, um, why you think that's just a more efficient, effective way to do business in 2022 and beyond. Sure. I mean, well, COVID number one, I think COVID kind of changed the landscape for a bunch of insurance agencies, yes. how they do things. Um, the other thing too, is that with COVID kind of Zoom kind of came out and became very popular. And a lot of clients are very comfortable with doing Zooms now. And you can share your screen, you can show the policy, you can show everything. So I kind of feel like maybe going to people's homes is a little antiquated. It's hmm. not necessarily, uh, and it's not necessary really anymore with technology. Like and yeah, so like the process is old or the people that do it are old? Uh, neither. Not the people. No, the process is, is old. But you know what? If it works for you and that's what you feel comfortable with, then keep doing it. There's that's a good problems. answer. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. What virtual sales tips would you give? That's where I was kind of leading us to. I just had to have some fun along the way. I'm trying to get me to call people old out here, Cody. Man. Um, if, if you guys are old, <laughs> let Jesse know in comments. You don't appreciate that. Okay. Okay. Um, virtual sales tips. Um, well, confidence it goes a long way over the phone. Confidence goes a long way, even if how they get it. How do you get it? Because that's that's like the most important thing with phone sales. Yeah. So what I teach my agents is be confident enough to go through the question form. It's like an intake form. What's your name? Your date of birth? Your height and weight? What medications do you take? Okay, great. 
So now that I have all that information, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go shopping for you. I'm going to call you back. I'm going to have a number of different plans to go over with you. I just need for you to be able to tell me that you don't like any of them. Okay. Right. And then mm. you, as soon as you do that, get off the phone and call your upline and be like, Oh my God, I have a client. Once you can be as unconfident as you want. Right. But as long as you can get through that intake form with confidence, then it's fine. I've even had, um, I have, whenever I have new agents that do that and they have an intake form, I will then go on three way and talk to their clients and sell it for them. Any good upline, if you have a good upline, they should be able to get on the phone with you to sell your first couple policies mm. and not take any commission, give it all to you as an agent, because you're the one in the, like, you're the one grinding out there. I, I don't, I don't, I've heard of people, oh, if I close it, I get half of this. No. I'll close it all. You can have it all. I want, I want them to stick around and be successful. So how are they yeah. going to, how are they going to stick around if they're not making money? <laughs> it's a good point. Yeah, yeah. It's a great point. What else other than confidence? Um, well, like I said already product knowledge, right. Um, but that's that you learn that, right. So let your upline close the first couple deals for you. Start watching YouTube videos of, of other people. Um, and then the one thing I think that's super important is learning how to connect with your client. Um, building rapport. And you can do that in a number of different ways. So you can, uh, the one thing I always used to do is I used to kind of like, uh, you know, okay, what's, oh, how old is Jacob? Oh, okay. You know, and kind of just like get to know them. If I heard a dog barking in the background, I would ask what's the dog's name? What kind of dog is it? How old is it? Oh, I have this kind of dog. Do you have any cats? Oh, I love cats. Send me a picture. Like that was me. That was me on the phone. I got people to really kind of open up because I was, um, I was interested in them and people want to talk about themselves, right? So if you're just talking about business, the insurance, the plan and yourself, people want to talk about themselves. Yes. So I, I had clients, they sent me, we got on so many tangents. They sent me pictures of their motorcycles. One guy sent me like all 15 pictures of his motorcycles. And I was like, after the 14th message, I'm like, okay, I get it. Um, their home remodels, their kids, their dogs, you know, the first, first day of school. Like I really got people to really consider me, I, I'd say part of their family. Yes. Yeah, that's big. And what are some of the things that you did from a rapport standpoint? to build that along the way that a lot because there's some agents that um maybe they're good at building rapport and they have a good personality they're fun at you know parties or whatever then they get on the phone and they just get so serious and their personality doesn't come out yeah yeah you know what's funny because they're i i've seen i think it was you maybe that like showed was it you that you posted something the other day and you showed like the people with the headsets and the suits and they were all like very like stiff right you're not right. a different like just because you're talking to someone stop that's one of the things is i from whenever whoever i talk to i'm always just myself like i'm just normal yes. and i feel like a lot of people try to put on this uber professional demeanor and if it's not you it comes off very cold and like very false and so i say just be yourself talk to people like you're a human you're out in the grocery store you meet someone you know you're in line at i don't know you're, you're getting, you're waiting to be sat down in a restaurant and you kind of try start chatting up somebody. How would you talk to them? You mm. know? And, and so I just always tell people just the first thing is just be normal, be yourself. And uh, it'll, it'll flow from there as long as you don't stifle who you really are. Yeah. That's a good point. I mean, yeah. When you go meet somebody at a restaurant, you're not like, okay, <laughs> hello, exactly. Mr. Sir. How, how are you doing today? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You're just like, Hey, how are you doing? This is Cody or my name is Cody. What's your name? You know, this is my wife, Lauren. You know, yeah. it's more casual. And I, I, I think that's just kind of, that's good. You'll, I don't know if you've ever seen me be super professional, like Uber, like where I stiffen up and I'm not myself. I don't know. It's just not me. I haven't. Yeah. Good point. <laughs> Definitely not on Thirsty Thursdays for sure. You've Definitely. never seen me on Thirsty Thursday. I don't even drink on You're making it. Wow. And you know, it's Thursday. I'm going to, Stacy, can you bring me an alcoholic beverage? <laughs> you got to at least add wine. Okay. Then it's really, you know. We have wine. You know, people can choose wine if they want. Bougie wine or just some cheap wine? Uh, the wine you sent. I'm not sure. What is that? Oh, if I sent it, you know. Yeah. Or pro Lauren probably sent it. You probably I, hope it's, I hope it's bougie if I send it now after saying that. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, 
What's the coolest thing you've done this last year? We've done a lot of stuff together. You've done a lot. You've accomplished a lot. You've had some special moments. You, you've had some highlights and some just reels in general. Yeah. What's some things that stand out to you? Um, actually, this year was a huge year for growth for me. Um, a, a bunch of really awesome things happened this year. And I always love to go back and kind of count my wins and learn from my losses, right? So mm -hmm. a couple cool things that happened is I went on tour with you. And yes. I started speaking on stage in uh, something like eight different cities, which was really cool. I got to meet. How some crazy of is that? It's crazy. I'm tired, Cody. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. I got to meet some amazing people and make some amazing connections. I'm very thankful for that. Um, my book was published in January. Um, my workbook actually is coming out probably by the time this podcast is out, it'll be out. I launched Soul a beneficiary, sole beneficiary. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I've sold, I last time I checked, I think it was like 800 copies since January, which That's is awesome. crazy because it's an insurance book. Correct. It's you applicable know. for anyone, but it is a great book. Yeah. It's a cool, yeah. cool title. Great. It looks great. Everything you do is very classy and professional and it shows. Thanks. Yeah. I, um, I, what else? I mean, I got engaged. That was pretty Yes. Cool. That's <laughs> a big moment that actually, and actually Milo, that was the third biggest highlight of the year. Just yeah. Kidding. Yeah. And then I, um, I'm launching two, two brands. Like I, I'm very passionate about like arts and things like that. And little known fact, I actually, um, at one point in time, I painted like full time as an artist mm -hmm. and put my artwork on streets and, and internationally and things like wow. that. And so, um, I'm technically an internationally collected artist and I have my artwork on all kinds of things at welfare or not welfare, Wayfair, Bed Bath and Beyond. Whoa, Stacy, where's mine? <laughs> all right. Just so you know. Oh, <laughs> what, 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 what is that? I don't, what is that? It is called, um, it is called the blue Smurf. And it was just created by random stuff. <laughs> hey, our audience has got to see Stacy now that she's talking. That's just a rule. Okay. It's a rule. It's a YouTube rule. Yeah. What's up, Stacy? Say hello to Stacy. That's cool. I make the drinks here. That's right. She's a bartender. Slash. You actually heard me. I was yeah. really choking because he keeps saying I'm an alcoholic. So, no, I would never. Yeah. St Stacy's awesome. She's fun. Yeah. Tell her, tell, her, tell her we miss her for being at the, you know, some of the ending road shows, but we'll, I think yeah. I'm sure we'll see her in two weeks, right? Yep. Yeah, she's coming. Everybody's coming. Cool. I love it. I love it. Um, so let me finish. I, oh, one more thing, not including Cody. I want to finish one thing. <laughs> okay. So I created a course, which that I think it's super cool. It's 109 lessons. Um, talks about everything I did from beginning, how I started uh, you know, virtually like with nothing and then built my way up to own an agency and yes. it teaches people how to do that. Um, and then I'm launching a, a bag line for, for people. It's a very high end travel bag line and then a clone and perfume. So mm, that's awesome. That's yeah. so cool. I love it. That's been a big year. Probably one of my busiest years ever. Yeah. 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 And I hired my daughter. She works with me. Nice. I love that. I love that's cool. working with my child. That's, um, I think that's every parent's dream. Yeah. You know, to be able to special. provide for their family. And then when their kids get older, to be able to pass down a business. Yes. You know? oh, where, where's your office at? Maitland, Florida. So if some, wait, Maitland? Maitland. It's right outside of Orlando. You could just Maitland. say outside of Florida. Yeah. So if somebody wants to come to Maitland and, and that's just out of Orlando during on Thursday afternoon and just hang out. Yeah. Can they do that? Yeah, of course. I love it. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how can they get in touch with you, learn more about you and find you online? You have also absolutely rocked it today. This has been a lot of fun. Thanks, Cody. Uh, well, so he already said Jesse Christina on Instagram and then my website is jessiepark.com and Boom. uh yeah pretty much it. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram. I actually am very interactive. So if you have yeah. questions about insurance, I, I try to answer them all. And it doesn't matter if you're with me or not. Boom. That's a freaking episode. Take that Lee Feldman. Okay. Awesome job. <laughs> Jesse Park, you rock. Thanks, I appreciate you and you will see you in two weeks. Let Jesse Park know how much you appreciate this episode, how much you enjoy listening to her. Come listen to her at 8% live or on the live stream. And give her some love and comments. Jesse, you're awesome.
Thank you, Cody. See you soon and see you guys on the next Power Player Podcast. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're gonna love. It's right there, click on it, see you in there. Hey, welcome back to the CA Power Players Podcast. Your host, Cody Askins, I got a special guest today. This woman has done incredible things in this business. Let me give you some stats for her introducer. Okay, it's crazy what she's done. Her team last year did 